I'll just cancel this one. Yep, it's on now, live stream. The question is, is it on Facebook? Yeah, let's... It doesn't matter, you're, you're on yep. Facebook. You're on okay. Facebook. You're on live. That's better. Okay, we are live. We are live, all right, guys. What's all happening, right. everybody? <laughs> We got the world famous Dr. T right here. Look at that. Right? I see on TV every night. Every night I see on TV. Um, welcome back. It's been a while, Doc. It's been a while. Yes, it has been a while. Lots to talk about. For all our viewers, we had some technical issues in our restream software. So we're back to Zoom tonight. So all of you on YouTube and Twitter uh, are not getting this right now. So unfortunately, Doc. How's it going, buddy? Again, it's going Dr. Well. Tony Tripkovsky, Doctors of Waikiki, and Neo Medical? Neo Urgent, Neo Health Urgent Care. Neo a little bit. I'll, expl I'll explain some of that tonight. Yeah, I know you're yeah, going to ask some questions. Please. How you been, Doc? I've been good. I've been uh, feeling good. I'm feeling healthy, exercising, taking care of myself. Um, I got the, you know, I got, you know, vaccinated and, uh, when they uh, mandated uh, you can get the third booster, I got the third one because I had some issues I thought would have been best for me to get the third uh, the third uh, vaccine. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. Um, what the, uh, what, you were right dead smack dab in Waikiki. Yep. What's it like in Waikiki, Doc? What's it like right now? Uh, you're right there. I'm sure you're seeing a lot of, lot of patients. Yeah, so in, at Doctors of Waikiki, we're, we're seeing about 100 plus patients a day. Of those 100 plus patients a day, I'd say about 70 of them are do the COVID testing because either they're symptomatic or they got exposed to somebody and they're trying to uh, find out you know, if they got you know, the, the illness or not. But the most common, the most common problem related you know, right now is that we have this, you know, small, smaller now uh, uh, section of the population that's not vaccinated. And what I saw because of the mandate, I saw a lot of people getting vaccinated that were not thinking about getting vaccinated because they had to go to work or they wanted to go out and do, you know, you know, whatever it was. But so I think the mandate's helping. I know a lot of people don't like the mandate, but most people don't like the mandate of the people who aren't vaccinated. Right. Um, I don't know why there's opposition to the vaccine. That's always amazed me. Um, we've been doing vaccines probably close to 100 years. But every time something comes out that's new, people oppose and they worry there's going to be something else can happen. You know, some of the stories we hear are really ridiculous. You know, like they're microchipping people and they're getting metal in their bodies. And, it affects their you know, ability to have children and all these crazy things. But you know, I, I think it's funny, you'll have these people that are opposed to getting the vaccine, they're younger, but they'll drink like crazy or they'll do drugs, that's okay. So their, their local dealer can give them things, but they don't wanna get a vaccine from the doctor. So it doesn't make any sense. Everything's backwards, you know? And so I, I don't know what to do. do you see, on that note, do you see these guys that won't take the vaccine because they don't put these foreign things in the body. But of course, you see any of them coming in positive with COVID and asking you to do whatever you can, use whatever you can to get them get them fixed. Yeah, I get a lot of requests for iverme ivermectin and other things, but I mean it's pointless. I try to really push everybody to get the vaccine. At first, I was angry, and then I said, you know, what am I going to get angry about? You know, I'm just going to tell them. I think with kill them with kindness. You know, tell them, hey, you know, you should get the vaccine. I'm a doctor. I'm really worried about you, and this is why I think you should get the vaccine. And sometimes that worked, sometimes it didn't. But yeah, I, we get people that are positive. We have people that get that are not vaccinated who you normally think would not get that ill, maybe in their in their late 30s, early 40s, and they get them they get so ill they get hospitalized. And there's even a small subsection of them that die. Mm -hmm. We had that, you know, there was a, and I was just looking at a recent. Uh, there was a, wasn't there a fire? Uh, uh, Worked for the fire department on uh, another yeah. island. Yeah, he just he was not that unhealthy. He was a pretty healthy guy. He was young. 
So it's really, it's really sad because we have a way to save people's lives in a safe way. And there's people saying, oh, and I, you know, they're saying, oh, I don't want to get this vaccine because like you brought up, they might say, because there's something in it that's going to do something more to me than just the vaccine. And a lot of, they're all absurd, you know. But we are seeing a down, a downtick, tremendous downtick in COVID positives. That's one thing I'm really happy that I'm seeing, especially the past two weeks. And so a lot of people are coming in to still get tested, but they're negative. And so I'm hoping that's the trend, which I hope that, and I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna be the case. And if we see this downtick and another variant comes out that's not any worse than Delta, then we should see us getting a hold of this. According to Josh Green, I think we're at 90% Hawaii, at least one shot. 90% of eligible residents of eligible. Over, over the age of 18. Yeah, and that's great. And then in the yeah. next two weeks, they're going to start offering it to 5 to 12, which will be great because then majority of you know the people that are getting it, it, the most common source would be the children because the children get it. They're not even symptomatic, a lot of them. And so you don't know that they have it and they give it to, you know, they give it to the adults. So I really, I really look forward to the next wave of the vaccine. I, I really think that as, as holidays come around, vaccinating that, that population of children will help a lot. And then the mandate is also forcing people to get vaccinated. Um, I mean, I, I want everyone to be safe. For me, getting the vaccine is the safest thing you can do to help protect yourself. And if you do get the virus, the likelihood of you dying is almost zero if you're vaccinated. But the, it's not the same if you're not vaccinated because we don't know how that virus is gonna affect you. You might get very sick. You might get very minor, minor symptoms, but. We were in the last couple of weeks, we were seeing several days with double digit deaths in Hawaii. Um, yeah. Well, those, uh, as that was happening, did you see an increase in people wanting to be vaccinated? I, I think it scared some people. I, a little bit, sometimes when there's somebody in their family, I've seen people that were anti, anti-vaxxers, somebody gets sick in their family, gets really sick and they're you know, being in the hospital, then they want the vaccine. But then I think the, the, biggest, the biggest change I've seen really has been the mandate where I had you know, a whole slew of people not wanting to get vaccinated. And as soon as the mandate rolled down, they're all calling me and saying, how do I get the vaccine? Where do I go to get the J&J? &J? How do I get this? And so I was really happy to guide them. I never had people ask me before to get the, where do I, where do I go to get the vaccine you know, since the vaccine got released? All of a sudden the mandate changed everybody's mind. And they were a lot of them were anti-vaxxers, but they said, okay, I'll get the vaccine now. And plus, because the Pfizer became FDA approved, I mean, there should be no barriers to getting the vaccine. Wow. Are, are you folks seeing the uptick uh, of sick people in your Waikiki clinic? No. I think what we're seeing is the deaths are related to people that have been sick for, for a while now. You know, when, the, when we had the outbreak of Delta, you got to think back about two months ago, right? A lot of people got really sick. Well, they don't die right away. They end up getting hospitalized and they get the pneumonia. Then they get intubated, then they're on the you know, respirator. And then if they're lucky, they survive. And then there's that smaller section of them that die, right? So I think it's I think what we're seeing the increased deaths are people that got sick, you know, from two months back. You know, yeah. What I am seeing is, you know, some people getting positive, but the majority of the time they do very well, you know. And that's why the the whole ivermectin and all these other crazy, you know, things that they're coming up with saying, oh, I took this and I didn't get sick at all. I only got a little bit sick, you know what I mean? It's all related to the fact that majority of the population who gets the virus doesn't get that sick. It's a small percent, much higher than, you know, for the flu, but it's a small percent still they get really get sick. And then a smaller percent of them get so sick that they, you know, get hospitalized and can die. But so I could say, hey, or eat a banana a day. And if you get COVID, you're going to be protected. And 99% of the time, I'm correct. And so they're going to say, look, I ate this banana and look, I'm fine. You know, so just crazy. You know, we have all these people who are not even in the medical field talking about medical treatments, which doesn't make any sense. Like the Joe Rogan, 
That's crazy. He should shut his mouth. Or anybody who's a rap star or anybody who's a movie star or anybody who's a something in uh, pop culture, they have no place to talk about what they believe. They should just be quiet. They do more harm. They do so much harm. You know, When somebody famous comes out and says, I'm not getting vaccinated, that's just justifying to all these people saying we shouldn't get vaccinated. Hmm. So well, you have millions, millions of people listen to that every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and they have no basis to whatever they're saying. <laughs> well, but I'd like to say to them, okay, next time you have, you got a, your appendix about the burst, I want you to call uh, this famous person to help you. Joe Rogan. I have Joe, Joe Rogan do your surgery since he's so smart, you know? It's just ridiculous, you know? And then, and I want, I want people to be well. I have no vested interest in people getting sick. I really don't. I want people to be well. That's why I got into this business to help people, not, not to make them sick. And so all the physicians are very passionate about what they do. And why we do it is because we want them, people to help people. So why would we convey to people misinformation? Majority, I mean, there's always, in every profession, there's a small percentage of outliers, but majority of the doctors, they mean well. They really want to help. And that's why I think it really hurts then we have something to help people and they kind of like kind of like mock us in a way saying well i you know i've had many people say well you don't know i know and i go well how could you know what's your background you're an expert in vaccines expert in viruses what is your background well you don't know because nobody teaches you these things i know and i go okay so you can't win so you're getting into an argument with people about things that they already have their mind set on this is why i'm not getting the vaccine and you can't change my mind. I don't care who you are. So it's just interesting. I, I'm harping on this a lot because I really think we're still in a good position to continue to get people get vaccinated. And we get the age, this, this next wave of the five to 12 year olds to get, hopefully many of them get vaccinated. And then we'll see, we'll see a really major dramatic improvement in this you know, virus, in this pandemic. People will still get sick, but they won't get that sick to be hospitalized. Hey, Doc, you know, when this outbreak occurred, I think we got the message from the administration that, you know, things were being monitored, but many of us felt that it was monitored too long where it was just running rampant already, got into the, got into the community, and it just started to get saturated. Um, now with the numbers coming down, do you believe that we are better prepared or we still need to and get on our A game to be ready for the next one should it come because it seems like the 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 move that we made was somewhat slow therefore ergo yeah. it took a longer time to bring it under control right yeah I agree Charlie I mean we always should be prepared just like like a battle right you have an enemy and the enemy can change his game and we don't want to be caught you know asleep during a battle so of course a new variant can come out that would be unpredictable. It might be able to, again, cause people who are vaccinated to get very sick and die. We, mm -hmm. we don't know what we're hoping and crossing our fingers that we don't keep on getting different variants and, th and then the susceptibility to the, to the virus um, doesn't change much and, and, the, and, the, and the ability to get very ill doesn't change much, hopefully for the vaccinated population, mm -hmm. but you never know. So we need to be prepared and the state needs to be prepared and the physicians need to be prepared and the public needs to be prepared because things can change. You know, look what we went through. Here's a good example, right? The Delta. Everybody got, you know, a lot of people got vaccinated and then we were all under a false illusion that we're safe, right? But yeah. still comes this Delta variant that can get you ill even if you're vaccinated and then pass it along to other people who are not vaccinated and get them very ill. We weren't prepared for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think, you know, my, I have many colleagues, physicians that got, you know, the Delta due to the fact that we we're vaccinated and we all thought that we we're safe. Right. That's what it comes down to. You know, that's a plain, plain and simple. You know, so one thing we, we, we had a guest, our guest last night on our show, he was featured in the Star Advertiser yesterday, but he was a, a breakthrough case. He and his uh, family party of 18 people left. Uh, 
to the mainland on their annual family trip because it was pre-Delta. They weren't, they didn't know about Delta. They all, all 18 were vaccinated. Okay. Uh, they came home after that long trip, California, Vegas, Utah, uh, Washington State, came home. He got the sniffle, started sneezing. Then he got the fever and the chills, tested. He was positive. He ended up getting COVID. Six, uh, five of the others, five of the other 18, all vaccinated, got COVID. They never got sick, just him. And it, it goes to what you were saying, that people, you start thinking that it's safe. And right. you start venturing out. And uh, he, you know, they constantly wore masks. They did everything they had to do. He said the Department of Health, the contact trace investigators figured out that they probably all got the virus on the plane, uh, got exposed on the plane. Uh, he didn't test positive till like three days afterwards. Um, but I think that what, you, what you're saying is so true. And now is not the time, you know, when, when our numbers start to drop. Yeah. Like we're, we're actually on a very good trend right now. Yeah. But now is not the time to go take risks. Yeah, absolutely right. not. Uh, yeah. One of the questions, Doc, that uh, have come up on the chat is um, post-COVID cases. Are you seeing post-COVID? In other words, people get COVID, they recover, and they get it again, and they yeah. I, 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 like I said, when Delta was rampant, we saw a lot of that. Now I'm seeing less of that, but it's still happening. I think what happened is the awareness went up after we saw a lot of people that were vaccinated getting it, and then they said, "Oh." And they thought, okay, now we better be more careful because we could still get it even for vaccinated, right? And then I've seen people that were had COVID thinking they were safe, getting COVID again, not getting vaccinated and getting really sick too. You know, So that's why I push even my COVID positive, you know, people who've had COVID, uh, I tell them get the vaccine you know, because you're getting a different type of immunity from the vaccine than what you're getting from the getting COVID itself. You know, I think another thing too, you know, just from uh, several sources that we, we had talked to it, uh, is saying that you'll see those islands with a higher rate only because they have more contact tracers. Because when you have yeah. more contact tracers, that's when you go and find them, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, just like, yeah. So if you don't have enough contact tracers, because that's that was one of the the scenarios too that was brought up saying, okay, because we know Honolulu at one point, they got just overwhelmed. They just, yeah. just didn't have enough. So when we saw that law, it sort of correlated with the numbers going down in a sense. Yeah. So I'm hoping that these numbers are true numbers and not numbers because they couldn't get to everyone from contact tracing who could possibly be infected. Well, I could verify that, Charlie, because you remember, we actively test people every day. Right. So I know where we're getting, you know, nine to 10 people or more a day positive. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing maybe one every few days. Okay, good. So I'm definitely active in the front. It's going down, thank God. And I think, like I said, that people now are more aware that they can still get it if they're vaccinated. So they're still being cautious, which is good. So that's why it's gonna kind of get less and less. And then we got the mandate, people are gonna get vaccinated because they need to, they want to go to work and they want to do what they want to do. Um, and uh, I think we're going to, we're going to see a much improvement, but what's happening around the corner is Halloween, right? And then what's happening around after Halloween is Thanksgiving. And then we got, you know, Christmas. And so all these holidays, people are going to feel, oh, now it's time, things are better, you know, and they're going to feel like things are better and they're going to want to congregate again. And we're going to probably see uptick again in the during the winter, just like the flu. But if they're vaccinated, the likelihood of death and destruction is almost zero. Okay. They still should be cautious. They should hey, be Doc, cautious not to get let, me, don't get let me ask you, I got a question here, this, this individual. Yeah. And he, he asks this quite often, but uh, how often, uh, if at any, are you administering Regeneron? And if not... Yeah. Why not? Do, do yeah. are you are you one of those that? No, we we uh, we're going to apply for the Regeneron. The Regeneron is really expensive, mm -hmm. and um, they're doing it in their other facilities. That are doing it. Miskovich is doing it. There's some doing it in the hospital. So if we have a case that we have somebody that we think would benefit from Regeneron, we'll send them to the hospital and have them okay. assist them with getting the Regeneron. Okay. Have, have you seen the success? I know I had a good friend that tested positive. I looked at the he numbers. Was vaccinated. 
They pumped them with the Regeneron. Boom. I just had another friend, unvaccinated, pretty serious symptoms. He got in, they pumped him with the Regeneron. Next day, he's feeling better. So I'm assuming that this monoclonal viral, yeah. whatever it's called, yeah, yeah. Is, is affecting our numbers and, and our hospitalizations, right? Yeah, I, I, I agree, because they are using it actively, because it's a it's a best tool we have when somebody's high risk is giving them the Regeneron. And I, I think in the hospital settings, it probably makes more sense than doing an outpatient setting. But um, yeah, I, I think all that's going to help. We're going to see, you know, we're coming up with better ways of treating the disease. We're coming up with better ways of preventing disease. Um, if we, we're lucky, the virus will not change too much. And if it doesn't change too much, then we'll be able to continue to improve and it'll become like a seasonal thing that people will get like the flu, the, hopefully, and not get that sick, though. You know? What's the cost right now on the uh, Regeneron, Doc? I think it's $3,000. One application? Yeah. yeah. I, I know my friend, uh, when he went, he does uh, the first question he asked the doctor. Yes, how much? <laughs> Is this covered by insurance? And she said, no, these are free from the federal government. So yeah. they, 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 Well, they, eventually someone, yeah, you, but you know, free, free means, someone's going to pay. <laughs> so exactly. I gotta, I gotta right? ask this question, and I'm gonna just yeah. warn you folks. I'm gonna ask the question because someone asked, and we had a discussion the other night. There's no stupid question, right? I don't want anybody to go jump on this lady because she's my auntie, and I'm sure you saw it. Um, there's a video. There was a video going around, and uh, I know that it's not a, a, it's a fake video, but many people don't. The lady got a vaccine. She put a. Oh yeah, I saw. <laughs> Everyone saw that. Now, yeah. the legitimate question, because these yeah. are the kinds of videos yeah. that are causing people to not get vaccinated. So again, nobody make fun because it's a legitimate question. Correct. I, I'm talking to our viewers, Doc. <laughs> like, okay, sir. Um, but but I, I, I did my research and I, uh, you know, that, that video was proven to be false. But the, the allegation was that Right after the vaccine, you put up a piece of metal and it sticks to your arm. Yeah. Well, is that possible? No. <laughs> no okay. You have to have so much metal in your body for something metallic to stick to you or magnet even to stick to you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there used to be, I mean, the, pro the problem is it's easy to make things. Oh. I thought it was really interesting that video because it was an older lady they used and it was kind of looked like it was her daughter sticking things on her and and the older lady didn't say anything and i thought that's very perfect using like an older lady a kapuna saying okay look you know and her and i said that's you know if you're going to make set something up in a way to make fool people that's the way i would do it but you got to think about stuff you know you, you take a magnet try to stick it on something that's metal it's got to be metal it's not going to stick on a piece of wood it's not going to stick on you know how much metal you got to have for the magnet to stick to you so it doesn't make any sense we'd be like you remember in terminator that one metal guy would be like him <laughs> well you know it's almost as if telling someone that if you get vaccinated yeah you can withstand anything right yeah and, and someone <laughs> and someone comes out with a baseball bat and gets ready to strike you right yeah. on the log <laughs> yeah i'd like but that i'd like that I would, yeah, I'd like to be all metallic. <laughs> and you're right. We'd live forever, maybe, but we'd have to uh, stock up on oil. <laughs> we'd get all rusty. We'd be like the Tin Man. <laughs> well, you know, the video looked real. And it was very convincing. Well, it was, it was very, real. Because they, they put the, the thing on the other arm, the unvaccinated yeah. arm, it fell off. They put it on. Yeah. And I can do a video like that, trust me. Yeah, of course. Like that. But anyway, but I just it was, to make that clear because real. there are a lot of people that watch, both live and after the fact, that, yeah. that have that concerns um, and like the tracking, you know, they're, they're putting in the tracker. All these guys going out and buying iPhone 13s. They're not concerned about being tracked. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> but, but it, you know, bottom line is, is that. Um, well, I, like I said, people do a lot of crazy things. They'll put poisons in their body. They'll drink like crazy, but that's okay. But the vaccine is dangerous. <laughs> you know, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. They'll do drugs, but the vaccine's worse. So they'll trust the local drug dealer or they'll trust the doctor. It just, it just doesn't make sense to me why people are opposed to something that 
even their, you know, the local physician has gotten the vaccine, the nurses in the community have gotten the vaccine. There's always going to be a small subset of people that oppose stuff all the time. But majority of people make it's common sense that we're all trying to help. But I'm happy that the 90% of eligible have gotten one vaccine so far. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with the five to 12 year olds. And I have a feeling it's not going to be as easy as they think. But if we get 50% of the five to 12 year olds, that's good. Yeah. That's going to help a lot because we're going to decrease this. They're like I said, they're like a reservoir kind of people get it and they pass it among themselves. They're social creatures, they're kids. They don't wear, they don't want to wear masks all the time. So they get a lot, you know, I'll test like a family for travel, let's say in the past. And it was either, it's usually the kids were positive and they didn't have any symptoms. Hmm. So I think, I think I'm crossing my fingers that as this progresses and we're seeing evolution of this, it gets better and better. And it kind of becomes a seasonal endemic thing that like the flu, I personally, hate the flu because whenever I've gotten the flu, I get really, really sick. I get so sick that I lose week work for sometimes two weeks. And I've not seen, you know, I've seen people get sick with the COVID, but the flu I think is worse because it, in my mind, a lot of times, because it gets the kids really sick. And then all the, and we were lucky with COVID, it didn't get the, it didn't make that many children that sick and the mortality was very low compared to the adults. Where with the flu, it's both elderly and, ch and children get very sick. So maybe the flu won't, won't come back, but I doubt that. It'll probably come back. Hopefully it won't come back with a vengeance. Hey, Doc, do you have any patients right now uh, that you've treated? Hmm. And are, are they showing any kind of uh, long-term effects that they that maybe they're having a hard time just shaking it? I mean, they're they're yeah. over with COVID. But yeah, there, there, you know, there are a lot of people they call in the long haulers that are having memory problems, body aches, um, definitely the smell and the taste. And some people pre pre vaccine, some of them still don't have their smell and taste back like they used to be, you know. But yeah, there are people that I've treated that have they feel like they don't feel like themselves again. Mm -hmm. So even more so the reason to get the vaccine because you don't know what kind of long-term side effects you can have from this, you know, from the virus. So if we didn't have a vaccine, okay, but we have a vaccine. Get, get vaccinated, protect yourself, protect your loved ones. Don't be the statistic. Don't be the, you know, the person that leaves kids behind because they, they believed in something and they believed wrongly, you know. One last question for you. With sure. regards to the booster shots, yes, right. So some have asked that the initial vaccine shot is like a booster shot if you took it a third time. So if they want people to get boosted, why you know they're they're offering all these free shots? Why don't they just let them take another round of say if they took Pfizer, let them get another another round of at least one third shot of Pfizer? Well, they are now. If you're over a certain age and you have an underlying you know, health problem, they think that puts you at risk. No, but I'm, 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 I guess my question is, you know, why are they putting restrictions? Why do you think they put restrictions just for well, those? I think the only restrictions they put is because they're afraid they might not have enough vaccine, which I don't think is the case because there's a lot of vaccine. I'm done. But maybe that's the case. I don't know. Okay. So I think, uh, and then they looked at it statistically. They feel that maybe it wouldn't make that big of a difference, but it must have made some difference because they said in this, you know, certain populations, they should get you know, the booster. You know, I, I have some underlying issues. That's why I got the booster. But a lot of people um, are just because of age, they're saying that, you know, should get the booster. In reality, I think if the vaccine wasn't an issue, maybe with the volume of the vaccine, I think everyone should get a booster. But I would wait maybe six months to a year post your, your second shot because probably we'll see some, you know, decrease in your antibodies probably six months to a year out. No, I think um, this relatively new vaccine, I mean, you know, speaking in general terms, it is still a new, relatively new vaccine. And uh, yeah. we're still getting data in from the millions and millions and millions of doses that have been uh, given throughout the world. Uh, I know Israel came out with a lot of good data 
uh, because of the level of, of uh, immunizations that they had. But we still got to re remember it, it's still relatively new. And, and uh, yeah. the, the thing is, someone posted that, hey, you know, uh, vaccine makers, all these uh, medical medicine makers make mistakes and they get sued. And that is true. I mean, yeah. you, you, you're not going to, there's no way you're going to deny that. But the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is, we know what COVID does. And I'll say my story is that I, I, I weighed the risk and the reward, the risk and the benefit. And for me, it was very clear uh, that it was worth the risk for me at my age with some of the, you know, like we all got underlying conditions. Correct. And, and uh, not everyone feels that way. And, and that's, that's just, uh, that's, that's what it is. I mean, um, even, what, you know, but, but, you know, one thing I look at is the people who are involved in the formulation of the vaccine, did they get the vaccine? Yeah. Did they give the vaccine to their family? Yes. The Jonas Salk, who broke, you know, through this barrier to get this vaccine to help with polio, which was devastating in the 50s and 60s, right? He gave himself the shot first. Mm. So, so if you believe in your science that you're doing and you're, I mean, like I said, doctors or scientists involved in human you know, caregiving or, you know, the delivery of health, their motivation is that, the health. They're not, they're not, it's not, it's nothing more than that. I mean, if they were in it for a business, they wouldn't have gone into medicine. They would have gone into business school. There's a big difference between a physician and a businessman. The doctor is really at the bottom line is about caring for people. And it's always going to be like that. When it becomes a business, then it becomes very difficult to care for people. Hey, Doc, someone asked, when taking the booster soon, how long after would you recommend a person get their yearly flu shot? You can get the flu shot right away after that. No, no, no contradictions to each other, right? No, okay. remember like kids when they're babies, you yeah. give them all their shots all at once, same thing. Okay. Uh, going back to the Regeneron, how long does that last? Is it like a one-shot deal? You get the infusion and, and it should, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't, it's not a preventative, right? It's a treatment. Right. So, I mean, you typically could get COVID again and may get right. another. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could get it again. What it's, what it's doing is and, boosting your ability to fight then, off the virus, you know? And then that'll lead right into my, my next question. And I, and I do want to spend some time with Neo Health because I, I think oh. that's, that's very important. But I want to, I want to, you know, we have a lot of viewers that ask about therapeutics. Why don't you guys talk about therapeutics? Why don't, why are you guys always doom and gloom? Why don't you guys, right now, therapeutics is really just a Regeneron and maybe the Remdesivir. Well, there, or, there have been some studies about vitamins. Certain vitamins do help. Vitamin D, you know, vi vitamin C, zinc, they do help boost your immunity because some people are a little bit deficient in those. And then, and their immunity might be just a little bit out of tune. So if you if you really want to boost your immunity, you can do like a multivitamin and focus on D and zinc, and that will help. Irrelevant, but uh, it's not like a cure all. It's not a therapeutic. It's just something to help boost your immunity, so it can help you from you know getting the cold or getting the you know COVID to in the future getting you know avoiding getting the flu because our immunity is what protects us from viruses and bacteria. And if our immunity is weak, that's when we get sick, when we get exposed because we're exposed to bacteria and viruses every day, right? How come we're not sick all the time? It's because our immunity is fighting off these, these uh, pathogens that get into our body. Yeah, Remember that movie, The Boy in the Bubble? Remember that Boy in the Bubble? Oh, yeah. yeah. John That's Travolta, great. right? Yeah, John Travolta. Yeah. <laughs> But the, I don't know how the hell I remember that, Doc. I really do not. Because it was a really cool movie. He was living in that bubble. And he met that girl and everything was really interesting. He fell in love. Then he said, hell with it. I'm out of here. And he just, and <laughs> probably died, but they never showed that, right? Yeah, that was... That was uh... Sad story. Yeah, but there are a lot of people that live like that, that not a lot of people, there are some people that have really poor and weakened immunity and they have to be very careful because they can get really sick from things that wouldn't get us sick because we have normal immunity. So vitamin, certain vitamins can help, but it's not like, you know, cure-all, but it can help in general. But would, would you want to ask me? No, no, but that would, that would be your advice for, for everyone anyway, right? I yeah. mean, no one eats enough and, fruits, no one eats enough vegetables, no one gets enough yeah. nutrients. So healthy living, the yep. multivitamin, and, yep. and I, I know uh, the, the, the other supplements that many have talked about. I think if you want to boost your immunity, um, yeah. Yeah, healthy living, 
like in general, like we try to tell everybody, you know, don't drink, don't drink too much, don't smoke, exercise, watch what you eat, keep yourself in you know, good physical condition because your body then is stronger, can deal with, you know, things that attack us on a regular basis from cancers to viruses to when you fall, if you've been, you know, in good shape, you're not going to break your bones because your body's more resilient to injury. And so that's just general general you know, things that people should be doing because that'll keep them healthy. It'll keep diabetes away. It'll keep their blood pressure low. It'll decrease their chances for strokes and heart attacks and all those things, even cancer, you know, but, you know, still things happen to people. Even if you do everything and you're the best athlete and perfect health, you can still get sick because we get old. As we get older, our risk for illness increases. It's just because the body cannot deal with problems that have occurred because our cells have gotten older and the bones and the joints, everything just changes in the brain. You know, so we take for granted all that, but when we get to a certain age, your body just cannot, you know, deal with uh, injury or illness is the same, you know. Dr. Marlene asks, my son got his first shot on July 27, but he didn't take the second shot yet. Does he have to do it again or can he just continue the second shot? I think it's a two or three month window. Um, so he should yeah, he'd right benefit. Now. Yeah, he'd benefit from getting the second shot. He'll boost, he'll, he'll, of course he'll benefit from it. It's just like you think about the theory of the booster, it's the same thing, you know. I don't think he has to get two shots. I think if he gets one more, he's adequate. Yeah, again, guys, a lot of these medical questions, check with your primary care physician. You know, they know you, they know your body, they know your yep. health. And um, Charlie? Hey, Doc, why wouldn't... Uh... I guess medical science recommend that when you take your first booster in between before you take the second, recommend go, go do testing to see you know where your your antibodies are. You know, I, I think I think because it costs it costs a lot of money. I mean, I, I and I think uh, maybe in the future that and also what they what we don't have yet is a way to quantify how many antibodies. I can tell you have antibodies, but I can't tell you how many. Mm. I mean, so if we can rate the antibodies from one to 10, I can't say you got 10 plus, right? So it's kind of like you have them, you don't have them, but it doesn't mean much because it still means you still could have immunity, but I can't measure the amount of antibody. You know what I mean? And then it costs a lot of money, but it makes sense, Charlie. But I think a lot of stuff we look at is what's the point? You know, here's the vaccine. They studied it. They know it does this. I think if there's like a, a question, yeah, that'd be good to test, but I think it, it'd just be too much. It's hard enough to get people to get blood tests for anything, uh, let alone here. You got to get the vaccine and then get a blood test. <laughs> They're going to say, oh, I ain't going to get, you know, you're poking me out too many times. Doc, I, I know, um, again, whenever you're on, the time goes by so quick. There's a ton of questions. Our last class. That's all the questions you want. And I'll tell you a little bit about new help. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to show a real quick clip because I, I, I wanted to, a lot of people may not know who you are, except what they see on TV. I want to share with our viewers, especially our new ones. When, mm. when, when COVID started and everyone was freaking out and everyone needed to be, everybody wanted to be tested and you couldn't get a test back then. You had to get symptoms. Remember when we started? You oh, had yeah. To get, oh, yeah. You had to freaking have COVID before yeah. they would even give you a yeah. test. And, it was and quite Dr. interesting. Key, time. Who many of us have, have met, many of our viewers have met when he was a doctor here in Kauai. I reached out, Charlie and I reached out to Dr. T. He says, I'll come to Kauai. He brought his whole damn crew to Kauai, set up at the Kauai Beach Resort parking lot yeah. and tested anyone, whether you had insurance or not, anyone who wanted a test could get a test. And I think you tested what? what? 200. 200, 200, 200 people. Over yeah. 200 people. And, and, and this is just a segue into Neil. After COVID, a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people were out of medical. So yeah. Dr. T... Yep. Got together, started Neo Health. I'm gonna go ahead and share this real quick just to give yeah. people a little, little look at this. Sure.
thank you for sharing that. But so in a nutshell, you right? You got the floor, buddy. Again, I was talking about, I've always been passionate about helping people. That's why I became a doctor. And I like the science of it. And I like all the stuff related to being a doctor, but it's about helping people bottom line. That's what it is. And it always would break my heart when someone would come or not come to the office because they didn't have insurance or they didn't have, you know, they, they couldn't afford to pay because they lost their job or what have you. And that's horrible, you know, and then, and I do my best to help, but in certain situations, it's too difficult. Or, and, but the part I find that people don't even come in because they're so afraid they're going to have to pay. And so I knew COVID, there was a lot of hardships. And I knew that it has to be a better way to deliver care because people were afraid to come in too, because they're going to get sick. So I said, well, why don't I design a clinic that's low cost? The primary entry point is online, but have physical clinics that people can go to when they need to get tested or physically examined. And you do it in a way that's not a big waiting room. It's a small waiting room. and You, you guided them there with appointments only. And then you give it and you give your best that you can for uh, X amount of money and then provide services with a menu. So if they have insurance, great, you can build their insurance. If they don't have insurance, you have a cheap menu for blood tests, x-rays, you know, suture, you know, if you have a cut, you know, repairing it, injections, all that stuff. And how I've, how I've done that to make it low cost is that I am using the local businesses to advertise on the platform. So before you see the provider online, you watch maybe five minutes of advertising, local advertising. And those advertisements help supplement the cost so that I can give the care for those people that don't have insurance for low cost. You know, and I've never, I've never created something that makes me more happy. When I have people come in and they, they say they get, we get all this stuff done for them and they don't have insurance and they'll pay like under, under 20 or $30. They're telling me they're so grateful. They're so happy that I was able to assist them for so low cost. Now, fortunately, things are improving. But the biggest thing I also find with care is access to care. It's hard to see the doctor in a safe and effective way. I, you can come see one of my providers online in five minutes. You can talk to somebody. You can talk to a doctor. You can ask questions. You can go online. They'll see you. They can treat you. We have patients on all the islands using online services. We have two clinics in Oahu. Soon we're going to be building a third on the west side of the island, somewhere on Eva on Fort Weaver Road. We're going to go to Maui. We're reaching out to uh, doing telehealth to American Samoa and soon Guam and Micronesia. And so telehealth is really easy due to the fact that everyone's got a smartphone or they got a computer or an iPad or tablet. And you go online, you talk to somebody, you get your, what you need that we can take care of online and we send you your medications to your local pharmacy. If you're here on Oahu, I have meds that are inexpensive. I have these contactless lockers where you can go in and get the meds uh, just using a QR code on your phone. You don't have to talk to anybody after you've paid online for the meds. So there's a better way of delivering care. I'm trying to make, make it so that everybody has a, a fair chance to get care for low cost. I've had situations where one of my, you know, early on when I started this about eight months ago, a lady comes in with a cast and she's been wearing the cast for over six months. And why she was wearing the cast over six months, most of the time you only wear cast for maybe a month and a half, two months, is because she couldn't afford to get the cast taken off. Isn't that crazy? Because they would ask her, you know, $400, she'd call it, it'd be $300. I didn't even have the tools to take her cast off. So I went to a friend that was an orthopedic surgeon. I borrowed his, his saw, his cast saw. And I told her, and I cut the cast off her hand. Wasn't that bad, but it was, you know, it was all, you know, atrophied because it was, she wore the cast for too long. But that's crazy. And that's just one example. There's so many other examples like that where people avoid to get care because of the cost. Oh, and I apologize. I guess I shared the screen, but I forgot to share, share the sound. Share it again. Yeah, I will right now. <laughs> Hang on. Let me, I got to replay this thing now. How the heck do you do that? Look at that. This is how much I know about YouTube. Here at NIU, our Urgent Care Plus clinics mean you don't have to wait weeks for an appointment. Plus means you can be seen by a doctor now. Like right now. We know some days are harder than others. Plus means you can speak with a licensed mental health professional today. Maintaining your health can be costly and inconvenient. Plus means you get 
low-cost medications, refills, men's health products, and much more. This is New Health. Excellent. Oh, you guys could hear that one. Um, I apologize. I'm still learning this. That's no, okay. Me too. But, <laughs> you know, we haven't used Zoom for a while, and I'm kind of... It's just one of those days, Doc. One of those days. I have many. Every day I have one of those days. But, but I... I so, like, like I said, most... Most of the time, it's difficult to help people because you got to find a way to do it. There is a cost, right? You know, things cost me money. The space costs me money. The providers cost a lot of money. The doctors, the medications. So I can offset those costs different ways. And that's what I'm doing. So luckily, I've had a good influx of people with insurance coming in. So that's going to offset some of my costs. I have people that um, do certain things and buy certain medications and I make a little bit of profit there to be able to maintain what I'm doing. Um, uh, it's coming 20, uh, we already have uh, over 3,500 members that are using our services. We've had over 6,000 visits so far, which is great. And I'm pushing that we'll get to maybe 10,000 members sometime in early 2022. And then I'm going to continue to grow and uh, do what we're doing. You know, it, it's, I've had people from, you know, kids use it with their parents. The parents will sign on and we've seen kids. To today, we had a lady, she was 80 some years old. And she was, you know, you know, getting telehealth appointments, which was amazing. She had a little bit of hard time, but it worked. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing but, that, you know, with yeah. the electronic platform, but it's neohealth.com, guys. You guys want to go check it out. Today. Yeah. Neohealth.com. Yeah. And people in Oahu can walk in, too. If they have a hard time, they want to understand what we're doing. They can just walk in through the door and we can explain to them, sign them up right there. But we can provide services in Kauai. We can provide service on all the islands. My goal is to have a clinic on every island probably more depending on the size of the island and the population. So Kauai's on my mind. Eventually, I'm going to put a clinic back somewhere. I think in Kapa, maybe in my old clinic where I used to be, because I see it's up for lease. <laughs> and it, this is not insurance. This is almost like a prepaid yeah. plan. Yeah, it's not insurance. The $10 a month, what that gives them is 24-7 access. If they have insurance, that goes towards their copay. If they get low-cost medications, there's things that we've created that are interesting, PSAs like Brada to Brada and all these other things, ask the doctor, get some access to that, get some access to these blogs that we've created. It's kind of like you get concierge medical service for $10 a month. And if you don't have insurance, I have inexpensive way of treating you. X-rays are $50. Wound laceration is under $50. You need a blood test, CBC is $12. The CMP is $20. So it's kind of like, this is what's going to cost you to get these things, but it's It's relatively inexpensive. I opened a, a non-for-profit. It's going to be active very soon. And what I want to do is get that non-for-profit um, funded. It's called Free Care Hawaii. And what I want to do is if there's somebody who can't afford their meds or they can't afford things, I can you know, help subsidize that and make it even costless for them. You know, Because there are some people in the population don't even have, they'll have Medicaid, or they, don't, or they don't qualify for Medicaid, but they can't do certain things or some things that they can't. And I can be able to help them like that. Wow. So, good stuff, good stuff. I, we see the commercials on TV all the time. Yeah. And, uh, I know a lot of our viewers signed up after the last time and they're, they're putting in the comments that, you know, it's one of those things that you don't want to ever have to use. Right. But, Lord have mercy, just to be able to get on your computer and 24-7 now, 24-7. Yep. yep, talk to somebody, you know. That's that's very rare. Only place you'll get that kind of information is in the ER, and that's very expensive. And, so and that's just, a chore nowadays. That is a yep. chore to get to ER uh, nowadays. Yeah, well, why why go when most of the time we can take care of stuff online? Yeah, if you're dying, you got you know bleeding out or whatever, yeah, go to the ER. But a lot of people use the ER because nothing else is open, and they're sick, you know. And it's after, it's after eight o'clock, where are you going to go? Well, you can go doctors at Waikiki, which is open till midnight. But after midnight, that's it. It's just me and the emergency rooms. Uh, one of our viewers, Chris Fire, said, message her. Um, she can help you with a space on Kauai. She wants you to open up. All right. <laughs> and Charlie will run it. Charlie will be the doctor. Dr. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie's going to be my security because we're going to have <laughs> such an influx of people coming in. We're going to need security. <laughs> yep. 
Doc, another question that you know keeps yeah. popping up every every so often is sure. that uh, you know when you know someone you know we we talk about a lot of these air flights and we, and we have a lot of differing opinions, right. but I'm of the opinion you know just as a you know just as, as a simple minded individual. They, they tell us, you know, wear your mask, stay socially right. distanced, try not to get exposure for 15 minutes or, or more, stay stay below the 15 minute threshold. But you're taking this flight from the West Coast for like four right. hours. Right. And yet they, they still continually repeat that the, the air, airlines is one of the safest. Yet our guest last night, you know, after we asked him, where do you think he caught it? And it was upon recommendation by his, his PCP that it's most likely he caught it in the airplane. Do, do you agree with that? You know, I'm going to give you, remember we did Doctors of Waikiki, we did mm -hmm. the Maui airport, remember in right. May. Okay. We tested, I think it was like 150,000 people. So these are people that were already um, either vaccinated or uh, they had a negative COVID test mm -hmm. prior to flying, right? And they're flying directly from the mainland to Maui, all right? And so, my assumption was going to be, and Dr. Wu also, we were thinking maybe we'd see 5% of that population COVID positive. You know, that was my assumption. But, you know, we had only four positives and, and two were unvaccinated. Yeah. And I go, well, maybe, maybe we're wrong. Maybe it's not, you know, the, the plane. Maybe it's not the tourists coming over that I think... It's a mixture of everything. And when I look, when you look at the big picture, they're going to analyze everything as this evolves. But it's really most of the cases we've seen people getting positive is because of socialization. We're humans. We like to talk to our family. We like to talk to our friends. Nobody wants to talk with a mask on. We want to see people's face. We want to, you know. And so mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest problem we have. And it's hard to remember all the times you meet people, talk to people. I really think that's what it is mostly, you know. I think yeah. on the plane you're wearing the mask. They they do they do sterilize the air the best they can. Um, I I really think I really think it's 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 really because you know we're humans. Okay. That's why viruses love us because that's what we are social creatures. That's why holidays are like they're having a holiday. The flu has a holiday. COVID's gonna have everything that's infects us has a holiday during the holidays because they say oh. They're all kissing each other, all hanging out, all getting crazy. Let's infect everybody, you know? You know, I think, and, and I, it's, we, we make a very, very conscious decision to not say tourists because it's travelers, because we have a lot of, like that group that we talked about last night, it was local families that went up and came back. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of our local residents are flying away, coming back. A lot of the visitors are coming from there, coming here. Uh, locals are testing, visitors don't get tested. I'm not sure how soon after they arrived you guys did the test. Was it upon arrival? Yeah, it was upon arrival, as soon as yeah. they arrived. I know, I, we, and, we didn't do any but, subsequent testing after that. Yeah, and, and I that, think that's, that kind I of downplay. Wish we had that. I wish once and for all, to put that debate to rest, we would have that. No one yeah. wants to do it. No <laughs> one wants to in a, uh, inconvenience the visitors, but yeah. you notice in the when, when, when the governor went out and said, don't come to Hawaii. Yeah. The, 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 air, the airline said, oh my God, they dropped, I don't know, 40% or whatever it was. <laughs> and you notice that the cases dropped. It was, the, yeah. the, it was it, it, it's like almost a direct correlation to travel and not just tourists, yeah. residents as well. And then, this, once yeah, the I agree. Hawaii, or once the virus gets to Hawaii, community spread does its magic and then it just blows the hell up. And I wish, I wish that the state would say, hey, even if it's a sample group, even if it's, I don't care, yeah. whatever it is. Post test travel test. After and see what happens. Yeah. Even if you don't quarantine them, right. test them four days after and see. Because I think we would see a whole lot more uh, after four days. And, and like I said, that guy <laughs> came on last night. I was three days afterwards where he started to get the symptoms. And you might be right, Mel. It just, no one's looking at it really effectively. No one, no one, no one tests. And, and then, you know, also less tourists means less us interacting, going, you know, working, right? A lot, a lot of this associated, like right now with the mandate, a lot of people are getting in the restaurant industry or the bar industry are getting laid off or working less. 
because they just don't have the volume this next month or two months, how long will the mandate last? And so, yeah, they're working less. So they're less interacting with people, customers. That might be it, but yeah. it's hard to say. I, I think it needs to be looked at also the, you know, specifically for the island, for people that are tourist destinations, maybe that's what somebody should do. Let's just test, every, you know, so many small groups of tourists coming back after so many days and see, is there really an increase? But we're going to have to, life's going to have to go on. Yeah, the fear, Yeah, the fear of COVID is going to need to, kind of calm down because right now there's a lot of fear and i think uh fear is good sometimes but sometimes it's bad you know i think i, I think, I think it's we gotta know the risk right? and i think right. everyone needs to know and the only way that happens is that if if we know what the risks are and uh, i think a lot of people take let their guard down because they're feeling comfortable right but it's really still risky 200 plus yep. cases. remember last year at this time maybe there was freaking 30, 40 cases, people were freaking out. And yeah. it's 240 yeah. and we're celebrating. It's still yeah. dangerous out there. It's yeah. still yeah. dangerous. Yeah. I mean, I think, dangerous yeah. stuff to not allow a UH football game to have fans. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> but just like the flu, we're not, you know, if you're high risk for an illness, if you're, you know, you're frail, you know, you, you'd avoid going to places where you, know, you could get the flu, right? It's the same thing it's going to be with COVID. Yeah. You know, you got you to calculate Am I healthy enough to go and get COVID or get flu, you know? So, but we'll see. I mean, it, it's gonna, I'm just always you know, hoping and praying that things just get better. You know, it took two years for the Spanish flu to get controlled. Two years, life was upside down, just like ours. And I think it's gonna be, we're coming to the two year mark. And I think 2022, I see, I see sunshine at the end of the tunnel. I love that. Yeah. Charlie, any more questions for the doc? No, that's it pretty doc, much. Any, Thank you guys again. Comments, Always a pleasure. Comments, doc, before we uh, before we let you go. No, thank you so much. I'm always happy to talk to uh, my friends on Kauai. Right, I hope awesome. I was able to help anybody with their questions. Um, like I said, well, I'm 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 a doctor. I really am passionate about helping people like all, all doctors and nurses and everyone in healthcare. That passion is very, very evident. Charlie, what's your uh, closing thoughts, Charles? No, I think, you know, the more questions that anyone can get answered, they can put them put their minds at peace. I think it's always beneficial to their, their overall well-being. Um, I think when people worry too much, it's just as deadly as the COVID. Yeah. You know, so... You know, if you can, and, and we're very grateful again to have uh, Dr. T on with us. I have to say, you, you're looking younger, Doc. You look like you <laughs> lost some weight there. <laughs> yeah. I know you, you and your lovely bride, I see your posts, and you know. Thank you. Thank you. The good work, Doc, uh, on Oahu. To our viewers out there, you know, um, Mel, Mel brought up a good point, and that is, you know, no question is a, is a dumb question or a stupid question. We we want to keep it where, you know, there there's you know there at times there's some questions that are just so way out there, and you cannot help but laugh, but nonetheless the person who is posing a question believes in their heart that they're asking something very sincere, and we have to respect that no matter how crazy it may sound, and I appreciate those who um, kept the peace tonight with the Q and A's, and I I continue to ask you for that because. We're an informative show and we don't want to lose people from watching this show because we believe that there's a lot of information still needs to be disseminated mm -hmm. to all of you to understand what's happening at, at this given point in time. You know, don't don't get caught off guard thinking that just because the numbers are dropping that we're, we're rounding the corner. No, because the same way we thought last year when the numbers went down, it rebounded and got even worse. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen this time. But I am saying we just have to be prepared so we don't get caught off guard. But that's it. Thank you very much. Hope you have a pleasant easy, uh, evening. Mel? Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Doc. Again, man. Um, Thank you, guys. It's been a while. Appreciate you making the time. I know you're a busy guy. You know, um, guys, I think Charlie makes a good point. Doc makes a good point about you know, we're, still, we're still at a relatively high level of cases per day. A lot of infections still running around. So we got to be safe. You know, this morning when I checked my email, I saw two airlines, super low fares. 
like yeah. just promoting the crap because they understand that people are starting to feel more comfortable even jump on a plane and go on that i get it guys i'm i'm so freaking over this COVID. i want to go and travel and see the world but we got to be careful if you travel be safe you, uh, you know just be safe yeah uh, exactly doc i appreciate your passion and your commitment to the people uh like i said you know you coming to Kauai and testing and the neo neo health uh helping a lot of people we appreciate you so much hope you know you know this once COVID is gone and charlie's concert the free concert with the free food and the music and yeah uh, yeah Let's do it. uh you'll be one of our uh special guests thank you i'll bring my ukulele I can, I, absolutely i cannot wait for that day to our viewers tomorrow night dr d working seven o'clock i hope we get this damn thing working right um apologize for the technical difficulties difficulties we'll see you guys tomorrow night seven o'clock hello god bless you, Love you guys.